going on guys today we're going to be going over how to chat with a csv file using ai um, so let me just go ahead and demo you this real quick you can see over here we have a python server running as our back end uh, and then we have this Next.js app with a simple ui um, where we can interact with it so we'll go ahead and well, let me show you what the file has inside first so you can see it has uh, student data um, just generic information I threw in this file. Pretty basic stuff, so should be able to handle it no problem. We'll go ahead and upload the file. And then we'll go ahead and ask, what grade is Stacy in? So you can see the agent get run over here. It's observation of the file, and then it's final answer. And then we take that file and we display it on our front-end application. Now, uh, please note when we do go through this, we're not going to be covering any basic coding information such as environment setup, syntax, file structure. So it's a bit more of an intermediate tutorial uh, just to get you up and running. If you do want a more beginner friendly tutorial, maybe we can cover that more in depth in future videos. So let me know if you do. But we're going to go ahead and start in our app.py file. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of this, but we'll leave the basic setup. Uh, just make sure you install these imports like I have here and define your app and then set your environment keys up. Um, keep in mind you shouldn't store environment variables like this just for the sake of this video. I am, uh, but you should never be doing that. So the first thing we'll do is set up the route at which we're going to hit the requests. So we'll go ahead and set that up. We'll call it predict. You can call this whatever you like, but I'm just going to call it predict. Uh, and then we'll define our methods uh, as post. If I can type today, post. Then we'll get into our Python function. And I'm just going to call it the same thing uh, just for simplicity. And then we can go ahead and begin. So this is where we're, the first thing we're going to do is get the file um, that we send over from our front end. So we'll go ahead and define the file. And we'll get it from the request file called file. Now it is request.files. I made this mistake earlier. And the next thing we're going to do, which I don't recommend doing if you're going to do a production build, is save the file to our local disk so we're able to read it. Um, you don't want, at a production level, people sending you files to your local drives. Uh, that could be a nightmare, especially with storage capacity. You would want to upload this into a database instead and then pull the files from that database. But just for this example, we'll go ahead and save them to our local disk. After that, we're going to go ahead and run our agent. So we'll define our agent as create CSV agent. Now, under the hood, if you are familiar with pandas, this is how it is reading the data. And then using OpenAI's language model to interpret that data. <coughs> so back here, we'll go ahead and define our model, which is, we're going to use OpenAI, and give it a temperature of zero. This means we don't want it to be creative. We want it to be super precise with the data it returns, and we don't want it to deviate at all. So we'll go ahead and find that. We'll pass in a file, and we'll go ahead and set the verbose to true, just so we can kind of see how it behaves. This is what's going to allow us to see this information. Very helpful for debugging and just kind of to see how it thinks and runs in the back end. And we'll need to print that, so we'll do agent.agent lm and underscore chain dot prompt dot template. Well, we got to spell print correctly. So agent dot agent dot LLM underscore chain dot prompt dot template. So after we have the file, we're going to want to get the question. That's going to be the next thing we're looking for. And we will get it the same way from that request form. And we're going to call it question. Now that we have the question, we're going to be able to store it in a result where we run the agent. So we'll go ahead and define what the result's going to be. This is where we're going to run the agent on the question. 
and get our result. Now, after we get this result, I do like to remove that file. Remember, we downloaded it locally, and I don't want it to sit there and forget about it. So we'll go ahead and remove it right away as soon as we can. Remove that, and then simply return our results. Okay, now that we have that, whoops, I forgot to store this in a object. So we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, yeah, I was right the first time. And we'll go ahead and fix that. There we go. Now, after we have that, we'll just finish off with our regular Python syntaxing for the app to run. Call it name equals underscore main underscore underscore. And then we can run our app. Run app, set debug, equal to true. And this should be a double equals. Okay, and that is all the code we need to actually make this happen. Um, I know it's shocking. I thought it'd be a lot more code. When I first did it, it was under 35 lines. Um, that means Lang Chang is doing a pretty good job of making its agents pretty easily accessible and easy to get up and running. Uh, so once we have that, let's go ahead and start our server up. And now that server is live listening for requests. So let's hop into our Next.js application. Um, this is a Scratch Next app. I've only added one page. So if you just create Next app, add a page. I called it CSV Chat. Call it whatever you'd like. <clears throat> and this is where our front end code is going to live. Now I'm going to keep the return just because it's a lot of CSS. And then the rest is just the inputs and the values getting passed to them. So you should be able to set that up, but here's the code. In fact, if you'd like, I can uh, push this up to a GitHub repo, make it accessible, and leave the link in the description. So let me know if you want that. Maybe make it a bit easier if you need to refer to it later. But we'll go ahead and get rid of this and start from scratch. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is define our state variables, and we're going to have three. Remember, we're going to have the result, the question, and the file. So let me type these out real quick. These are just your regular state hooks. So we'll set result. Use state. And then we'll have our question. And then we'll have our file. File, set file. Okay, and that's all of our state variables done. So now we're going to go into our functions. We'll do the first two easy ones, which are the handling the change requests. Um, so let's do that real quick. <clears throat> we'll do handle the question first. I am using TypeScript, so of course we have to do event any. And then we'll set our question to whatever that value was, event.target.value. And we'll do the same thing for our file change. And any. And I know I'm going a bit fast. Again, this is not supposed to be a beginner tutorial, so I'm not explaining everything in depth. If you do want that, please let me know though, and uh, we could probably make that happen. And we'll get this from the zeroth index. Now we're going to handle the submission. So this is where gonna, a bulk of the code is going to lie. Uh, we've already got it right there. Um, okay, now let's start handling this. First, we're going to get rid of the default behavior. Prevent, I believe it's default. Yep. Okay, so we'll start with our form data. 
this is how we're going to handle the file upload. So we'll create a new form data. And then we're going to, let's see, have the form data. And then we'll check for a file just to be super safe. And here's where we're going to append whatever we get from that form data. And it's going to be the file. <clears throat> and just to follow the same structure, we'll go ahead and do a conditional for the question too. <clears throat> Probably not necessary, but just to be safe. So we'll do form data dot append question and the question. Now, we have those done. We can move on to our fetch. So this is where we're going to be hitting that endpoint that we created in our Python. Um, your URL might be different than mine, maybe the same. Uh, you'll have to go ahead and check, make sure you're hitting the correct endpoint. Mine is 127001. And we're on port 5000. You might be on a different port. Again, you need to check that. And we called it predict. This needs to be the same name that you called it in your Python application. So if you call it something different, yours will be that. Now, <clears throat> next thing we're going to do is pass our method in. So it's a post, comma. We'll pass the body in, which is going to be the form data. Okay, pass that in, and then we'll go ahead and do some dot then and catches. Uh, let's get our response. Response. And then let's get that from our response.json. And then we'll get the data. So same thing, data. And this is where we're going to set our result from whatever that server returns. And we'll get that from the data object under result. That's what we named it in our Python application. Make sure those do line up or you'll run into problems. Then we'll catch any errors. So dot catch error, and then we'll just log them out. Not the best error handling, but this will do for now. Air. And that is all of the code you need to accomplish what we showed in the beginning of this video. It is not a lot of code, to be honest, um, and pretty simple to do once you get the hang of things. And you can do a lot, lot more um, with the files and the functionality. We're just doing the very basics, but it can perform very complex data analysis and calculations on CSV files that are much, much bigger than the ones we're sending. But we'll go ahead and take another look at the file. Um, let's go ahead and ask it another question. Um, so let's make sure it's working, first of all. And we'll go ahead, what are all the female names? Okay, so we'll submit. You'll see the agent run. It's running, it gets the final answer. Stacy and Marilyn, maybe this was a bad example, but uh, it did pick Stacy and Marilyn and Oliver, Ryan, and Graham. Uh, yep, you can make your in inferences on which names belong to which. But moving on, that is it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.